perfect time to bring you back so we've just finished a bunch of progress to the fort and as we have finished and, and finished that up we've got an Eden Kadidi Elipare a giant humanoid monster with two heads so similar to the first time what we're gonna do we're gonna press M for military we're gonna press A for alerts and then what we're gonna do we're gonna activate burrow one that is gonna send scrambling every single dwarf who's out here on this map into the uh, into the fort we have removed the bridges from up there, the temporary ones. We are building a new stone one there when we get around to it. We've also cleared most of the trees off the map at this point. There's those two there seem to be new because I did literally strip the entire map. We got a small above ground farm for potato farming. We've done another wave of harvesting the bees, but then we had to turn it off because someone was freaking out about whatever it is that's at the bottom of the, the uh, river there that they want. In fact, I think I have a solution for that. It's a uh, B C no D B no B D no. I'll figure that out. There's a there's a way you can forbid items on the map. We'll have to uh, use that to stop people trying to grab that stuff. But essentially, everyone is now going to be confined to this floor again, where that handy lever is. So hopefully, what we're going to do here, we're going to follow the Eden. I'm going to press Z to zoom to it, F to follow. Oh, that didn't actually work probably, I don't think. Z and then F, there we are. Oh yeah, it did, it was just, it hasn't moved far enough yet. And as this thing gets closer to the fort, once it gets over the first bridge, we're going to try and trap it there. In between the two bridges. Right, so it is going to take the dwarves just half a second to... Uh, pull the lever and then it'll take a second for something to actually happen so if we've done this right grab this lever here pull the lever do it now okay something tells me that by now yeah no, we, we were too late so what we're gonna do we're gonna press squads we're gonna shift a and b so we get both we're gonna press enter we're gonna press kill from list and we are going to choose the edin with d now the dwarves should come running out. We do have some uh, fairly proficient dwarves, so this shouldn't, uh, hopefully, the setting isn't going to be too busy. Uh, wow, this is 10 pages of uh, this thing just being bashed and stabbed and cut. Look at that one as well. Bashes them in the upper leg with a silver warhammer, jamming the bone through the right hip's muscle. That's got to be painful. Yeah, that we just have this guy getting absolutely destroyed for 10 pages because our military is real good at debilitating things, but it doesn't look like they're good at uh, finishing the deal just yet. Lots of upper leg damage here. Punched him in the head. Fractured the skull. Well, these dwarves are pretty, uh, pretty hardy. Let's go down and see what's actually going on on page 10. Let's look at the most recent developments here. Bites the Yetin in the right hand, bruising the fat, uh, tearing the fat through the muscle. Well, no, the right head, not the right hand. Strikes the Yetin in the left head with his named weapon there. Dwarves will name their weapons after a while. Hacks him in the upper body, only tearing apart the skin. Uh, stabs him with a silver spear. So there's lots of, um... Oh, is it, that might be him dead there, actually. Stabs the Yetin in the left head with, her, with his silver spear. Tearing the muscle, fracturing the skull. Nope, I think it's still alive. See how many pit 19 pages now of this thing just getting apps. Oh, stabs the in his right lower leg with a silver spear, and the injured part is cloven asunder. So, this thing is just like bloody stumps at this point. <laughs> that was uh, that was gross. Let's see who got the, fill the finishing kill. A flying silver bolt was the last thing to hit. So, we're now gon we're gonna have to um, figure out who actually got that kill. So we're going to press M again, A for our alerts. We're going to turn that off. Wait. Looks like we lost one of our... One of our dwarves there, actually. Or at least someone has removed themselves from the military. 
let's go down and see if anyone is in the hospital. Because that thing didn't hit us. So I can only assume that one of our military dwarves has left by um, either dying with, when I've not noticed, which is possible but unlikely because we haven't seen any ghosts or any rotting bodies. We are going to put a bunch of uh, just generic coffins down here in this. I normally like to make my tombs a little bit more fancy than this, but um, nope. The, uh, the regular peasant dwarves tend not to care too much about how they're buried. So we'll throw a bunch of coffins down here, and if he has died, what'll happen is um, one of the dwarves will bring his body down here and we'll be able to check. But I think what's just as likely is that he has become super depressed from the death of family members. Because we have seen a few of our dwarves throwing tantrums and being depressed over that. Now, we're doing what we can to uh, alleviate that, giving people nice bedrooms, plenty of alcohol. But there is only so much you can do after a big uh, loss like that of so many dwarves. There we are, so we'll, uh, we'll make all these tombs, and then if someone gets buried here, if they, uh, yeah, place, uh, that was a lie maker. How did all these guys die? And where have all their bodies been? Oh, someone was taken by a fair mood. And he's claimed a Crafts Dwarfs workshop, which as we know is the most boring of workshops. Yeah, there's quite a few dead there, but uh, I thought these were all the guys who... Oh no, missing. Yeah, one of our military guys is missing. We don't know where or how he's died, but missing basically means dead. I'm not sure where um, all these bodies are coming from though, unless, let's check one of these names here, let's go uh, Cog, let's see, is Cog memorialized on one of these stones? That one is, that one's, that one's not even a thing, uh, yeah, Cog Cabaldic. Yeah, so they're, they're doubling up here, memorial stones and coffins. But I don't think they can even get the bodies out of here. So designate, I'm sure there is a thing here. In designations for... Um, no, it doesn't look like there is. There is a way for like claiming and forbidding things. It's not that. Ah, DB, it's DB. We are going to forbid with F everything that's down here. There we are. They should now, hopefully, if we turn beekeeping on, we should hear the last of uh, the complaints about forbidden or unable to reach items. We have an absolute ton of idlers right now, and I'm not 100% sure what to do with them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's begun his construction, so we'll check that artifact out in just a minute. So for now, we're going to try and just uh, find some more trees that have grown. I know I saw one just a moment or two ago. Who is that? Is that the Eden? No, that's Burr. That's one of our dwarves. Who does not yet have a uh, coffin. thing. So uh, we're going to have to get on to... Yeah, that, that dwarf's been missing for a week. I'm not sure how they've um, died, to be honest. If we see drowned, I'm probably just going to cry a little bit. But there should be um, no problems now. We did get the moat finished. There is this weird little spittle of land here, but I'm not going to build a bridge across just to... Um, There are logs there, but they're not bringing them inside, which makes me think that our stockpile might just be full 
Yes, it is, but no, it's not. He needs logs, but uh, people aren't bringing them in. I wonder why that... Wait. I did turn off the alert, didn't I? Yeah, the alert is off. So people should be able to uh, come up and grab things now. Oh, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a genius. Someone got around to pulling that lever. Which, uh, as you can see, just removed the bottom bridge. It retracted it into the river and collapsed the other gate. There we are. Spring has arrived, nice. So we know the gates work, but there, there is enough of delay on there that we need to be very careful about uh, pulling the lever early enough to make it useful. I'm quite proud of our military. Anetan is not an easy opponent to face. They didn't take a single hit from what I saw there. If the military dwarf had died fighting the Etten, we would have got an announcement about that. Ha, so what has he made? A slate figurine of Albok Glenwheel. Let's take a look at that. So we'll press Shift L. And these blue ones are non artifacts, they are considered. Um, our ship. Oh, that's cool. We've got a book. We'll have a look at that after. So let's take a look at this. This is called Morongamag Sestardium, which is Languished Drilled, the Decisive Charms. It's worth 26,400 dwarf bucks. This is a slate figure of Orbok Glenwheel, all craft dwarf ship is of the highest quality. The item is a masterfully designed image of Gle Orbok Glenwheel, the dwarf, and dwarves in slate by Erdim Gosmodok. Orbok Glenwheel is, is surrounded by the dwarves. The artwork relates to the ascension of the dwarf Orbok Glenwheel to the position of King of the Conce uh, Coincidental Board in 32. It is encircled with bands of octagon cut pink garnets. On the item is an image of cooperation, the easy way, the forgotten beast parchment scroll in slate. One hell of a name for a scroll, but let's take a look at this a mud bound codex. Books and scrolls or codices. Which are made from either sheets and scrolls, uh, uh, sheets, and, sheets and scroll rolls in the case of scrolls, or written in quares, thread, and book bindings in the case of codices. Creating codices is a two step process. First, a, a choir must be written on a scholar. Jesus, this is insane. Books written by necromancers may contain the secrets of life and death. Well, let's have a look. This is a mudstone bound codex. The written portion consists of a 31 page essay entitled The Elves and Other Topics, authored by Lickot Canyon Dubbed. It concerns the apprenticeship of the dwarf Lickot Canyon Dubbed under the elf, that's odd, Aletha Sack Droplets. <laughs> that's an unfortunate name. In the midspring of 65, the writing is excessively ornate. Overall, the prose is amateurish at best. So that's just some guy's journal about what it is like to work with elves. And I butchered the English language, letting you know. Okay, so things are going okay. And I think it's about time, with all these idlers that we have, that we looked at turning a few of them into the second squad to finish out their numbers. So we're going to read. We're going to pause the game. We're going to look over here and find people with no job. Because no job means they're bored. So what we're going to do, we're going to throw them in the military and then they will stop being bored. So we need five. We've got four straight away from the second wave who are just doing nothing. And plenty down here. Okay, we can get these guys now as well. So customization, let's throw you in the military. And I think we might even have enough there that we could reasonably expect to make a third squad who would be, oh no, we need six, who would be like the ultimate leftovers with uh, nothing else to really do. And would have the worst of our equipment. So you you really don't want to be in one of the lower ranked squads. Is basically what I'm trying to tell you here. Just look 
looking for the last two people with military in their names. I'm sure we'll get there in the end. There's one. So have I missed one on my way down? It is entirely possible. Now whoever ends up in the um, third squad, if we do end up making one, is not going to have a good time. Okay, I'm going to have one more quick check here, and it might just be that I haven't made enough military dwarves. Or I am passing by them on a regular occasion. Okay, yeah, no, I think I just haven't quite made enough. So what we'll do, we'll uh, find someone else with no job. Uh, you'll do. We'll uh, let Dwarf Forest update. And then we can press M again. Now these crossbow people are technically also our, um, our kind of police force because they serve under the captain of the guard. There we are. So them being um, not as well armed isn't necessarily actually a bad thing because it means they are less likely to beat our dwarves to death. You have disrespected the trees in this area, but this is what we've come to expect from your stunted kind. Further abuses cannot be tolerated, let this be a warning to you. Oh, I see how- where, where's the last trees on this map? Where are they? Where, where are the trees? There's some trees. Boom. There's, there's your respect. I will respect it by turning it into something proper like charcoal. Are there any more trees? There's one. Any more takers? Oh, there's one. We're going to chop that one down too. So basically what just happened was the elven diplomat walked into our house and told us to stop cutting down trees. And our response, in good dwarven kind, was to chop down every other tree on the map that we could find. That is going to annoy the elves. A lot. We're okay with it. Unfortunately, we have little to no wood left. So I think what we're going to do is we are going to hope that we have caverns. We did um, mine out another floor here just to get our hands on more workable stone. And we're going to have to wait for that to be done. And then we're going to attempt to dig down and hopefully find ourselves a cave system. We haven't covered those at all yet. So hopefully we actually have one. Could not find path to construct a bed. Uh, I hate to break this to you, buddy, but... Dangerous terrain. Is he maybe trying to run outside and grab the logs? That's possible. We'll leave him to it either way. A lot of the saplings on the map that I was hoping would have uh, grown into full trees by now haven't. So that kind of blows. But we do have uh, enough wood now that our... Masons and Crafts Dwarfs aren't having as bad of a time running around getting their stuff, which allowed us to expand our residential area quite significantly. We basically ran out of wood, so there's no point in expanding it any further just yet. We are going to place down some more cabinets now that we've had time to build some more. Just giving each Dwarf somewhere to store their gear makes them quite significantly happier than if they have nothing, because their rooms don't end up becoming cluttered. Some dwarves do have a trait, and I'm not sure if this is on purpose, but there's a trait where dwarves don't care where they leave their stuff. So you'll be scooting along the rooms just having a look at your dwarves, making sure everything's hunky-dory in the bedrooms, and someone will just have like a dress strewn across their floor, and like a couple of socks just on, their, on the same tile as their bed, and they don't care. They're, they're content like that. Oh, something else to show you on the administration level here. We did move our mayor into this room here, which has his basically living quarters at the back and his office at the front. 
we moved Fickard into the old mayor's quarters because he was just not happy with what he had before. The chief medical dwarf doesn't require anything, but we did finish also our hospital and our uh, prison. So all of those rooms now can be used to uh, administer justice, which if we come over here is just uh, plenty of disorderly conducts if we want to um, follow those up. But it tends to basically result in dwarves being annoyed, so we're just going to leave those alone for now. Oh, what do we have here? An elven caravan has arrived. Good for them. We're not going to bother trading with them. Because they are horrible elves. One of the military dwarves has uh, bestowed a name upon his shield, which is how we've ended up with all of these ones. Like, um... Dragon Gifts. The Glitter of Matches. That's somebody's shield. That's what he's decided to call it. Someone else went with Plunged Desert. The Basin of Columns. Threat Mists. The Temple of Miseries. That's a really ostentatious name for a shield. We have uh, Cherish Gazes and Immortality you No, Immortality Mouths, a bronze shield. That is a bizarre name for pretty much all of that. You know, let's have a look at Relic. That's not Relic. We're going to have to wait for Relic to be on a different square from someone else. Oh well. Not super important for now. Erish has been re-elected as our mayor, which is pretty dope. Yeah, we're definitely just going to have to wait for Relic to uh, not have somebody else in his space. I'm guessing they're sparring right now. If it wasn't such an inconvenience for me, I would actually lock the gates so the elves couldn't arrive. I don't know where they are on the map right now. We do have our bridges complete. Huh. That's weird. Well, bridges are done, the moat is done. Oh, there's the elves. We we don't care for elves, so that is fine. The only reason I want to uh, have a look at Relic is I want to see what uh, gear they're wearing, because I think by now Relic might actually be the first person to have a full set of equipment. In fact, there's Relic. And Relic is currently dressed in... A bismuth bronze cap. Yeah, no, they, they do not have. They have bronze greaves. The cap and a breastplate. So they have most of it. If I were to order that entire squad to replace their clothing with armor, then those low boots and gauntlets that I bought would replace the gloves and boots and shoes that this squad are wearing. The problem is there's not enough armor for everyone else to wear. So most of them would just be running into uh, battle naked, essentially. Yeah, someone is oblivious, which I think means that he is basically going to wander around until he dies. We do have a real problem with people being upset in this fort and not, um, not doing their job. So I think for the first time, I'm going to try a utility from the DF hack. So we're going to go into this. We're going to go into the DF hacks. We're going to try automatic job assignments. We're going to turn that on. We're going to unpause, and let's see how many idlers we get. We were at, we were resting around 15 to 20. And it looks like, as it's changing the labors, we're actually getting more... We're getting more and more idlers. We'll give it a chance to kind of even itself out and see what it does. But so far, it's definitely increasing our uh, issue of people being upset because they're not working. But now it's going down again. Maybe it just takes a while to settle. We'll, uh, we'll give it a chance. We'll try it out for an episode or two. I'm going to be honest, I've never tried that um, hack before. I don't know how effective it is. It's... Um, it, markets itself as a program that will basically replace Dwarf Therapist for you. So what we're going to do, we're going to check Therapist here and see what changes it's made. Oh! The giant... Uh, yeah, the giant Lima Ediba Kalamala has come. A gigantic creature resembling a human, almost unparalleled in size. Hmm. 
Okay, so... Oh, we have some trees that have grown. That'll piss off the elves. What we're going to do... We're going to press M for military, A for alerts. You know what comes next. We're going to activate our burrow. We are then going to press U. Other, we're going to follow the giant. This should be interesting. Oh, that's... What's he... Who's he chasing? Okay, now... Gonna kill that cat, that's that's fine. Oh, it took him a page to... Oh, wow. Grabs a stray cat. Yeah, he just he killed the cat. Okay, now we're gonna try and pull the lever. Hopefully this one works a little bit better than last time. Because if we can get the, uh, the timing down on this... Add, pull the lever... Do it now. So let's follow our giant friend here. Nope. You can made it through. So squads. A and B. Kill. I'm going to kill this giant. But that giant is going to kill a bunch of elves first. And I don't know that we're particularly upset by that. So let's check what he's doing. He's already seven pages in. The elf merchant punches the giant in the head, but the, the shot glances away. Looks like we are, um, yeah, the military dwarf stabs the giant in the head with his silver spear, and the injured part is cloven asunder. So we've killed the uh, thing, we definitely have to be way quicker on that um, lever. We are going to get rid of the alert, and we're going to pop up to uh, this area. And turn off. So there's all these dwarves who are entirely capable of pushing that lever. But they are doing it slowly. So we're going to press N to make sure it's done now. There we are. That'll open those gates back up. People can get back on with their day. And there's now a dead giant. Looks like there's still a dwarf corpse out here. That people just... Or is that... Oh, I bet that's the, um, the were animal we killed. That's why they're leaving him alone. Okay, well, let's, uh, take a look here. How much of this do we have left to do? Quite a bit. We do have a few miners. We have four of them. But it's gonna... They're, um, they're just not as quick as our old set. But we actually need this stone for trading and for crafting. What I am going to do is I'm going to press J. We're going to do a downstair. This one is going to be much more narrow. We're also going to make it a higher priority. This one is going to be up here. But before we do that, I'm going to press B. C. You all know what this means. We're going to build a wall. And we've got a good reason for this is that uh, stairs can be dangerous. We're going to build this wall out of diorite blocks. The reason we're doing this is so that if... Um, If things are as dangerous as we think they are going to be down there in this stairwell, we'll have at least a somewhat secure place that we can uh, lock doors on. And if it turns out to be absolute hell down there, we'll just remove the door entirely and we'll build a wall in place and seal off this stairwell. But we're going to go diving for caves. So we'll build a door there. We've also made a lot, a lot of progress on... On um, blocks, we made a lot of blocks, so I think. Oh, oh maybe that's uh. Well, that was kind of a pointless thing to have done. Oh well, tell you what, then we'll uh, we'll cancel that, and now we just have this random random room down here. Oh well. We'll just do that again. It's not a big issue. It's too big. There we are. We'll then uh, 
designate this one to be removed. With the amount of dwarves we have, it should not take long for that to be done. In fact, it looks like they're just going straight at that now. And it looks like uh, auto hack, whatever, auto job assignments, is doing an okay job at keeping my dwarves busy. And from what I understand, it will also assign them to duties they actually want to do. Instead of the way I have previously been doing it, where I've just thrown jobs at them. Cool, so we're going to build a door there. We're going to press uh, designate J. We're going to do a single wide stairwell. If we find something we like down there, we can extend it to be 3x3 three three and keep the whole thing. And if we decide it's just not worth our time to extend it, then we'll leave it as it is. But we are just going to do a single up-down stairwell, and we are going to go down to maybe level 50. I don't expect we'll actually make it down this far. If there is a cavern, we should hit it by then. But we now have a bunch of levels of just a single wide up-down stairway that will hopefully hit a cavern. And there is a few reasons we want that. One of which being we can then uh, farm underground plants a lot easier. Looks like we're hitting quite a bit of Galena. Which is to be expected. And that dwarf's going quite quickly. So we'll leave him to his work. If we find a cavern, it'll bring us down there on its own. But we now have all these idle dwarves and all this stone. So what's the next plan? Well, the next plan... Super easy. We're going to press build. Big C. We're going to get an upward stairwell. We'll put that just... Uh, just there will do. Build it out of slate blocks, why not? See our potato farm there is going well. How are we doing for alcohol? Okay, we're doing not too terribly poorly. That giant didn't stand a chance either. I'm quite proud of the military. The progress they've made seems to be quite good. They have had um, a year or two of just constant training to get that done, so it's not entirely surprising that they're this competent. There we are, perfect. We have discovered a cavern. Discovered a downward passage. We're going to pause. I'm going to scroll up a level, or a few, I guess, and we're going to look for our stairwell. We might actually have to go all the way back up to our um, surface level. Okay, so we'll go down here until we find our stairwell. We'll follow this down. Where do we hit cavern? There we are. Okay, so it looks like our we've actually uh, made it straight to a cavern floor. There is water down here. You know what we're going to do? We're going to press designate X. We're going to cut off from here down. We don't need that designation anymore. Now we get to play with caverns. Now caverns are one of the more fun aspects of Dwarf Fortress. First thing we're going to do, because it looks like we actually hit straight from, like a straight pillar, we hit the floor. So what we're going to do, we're going to press designate, we're going to press D for mine. Don't go down any of yep. We are going to mine out a nice large open area here to make our kind of cavern base. So, this is going to be super cool. I'm really, really happy with this. We have all of these desert, uh, these uh, these ca cave plants. You can see there are also trees down here. There's fungi wood, which means we can get full swing on our millet, on our, um, on our metal industry. We're finding a bunch of gems. Let's have a look on you. Let's look at... Uh, so there's a bug bat. What is a bug bat? Well, the splattering of blood, so we need to be careful of that. So something is fighting something down here, so we are going to need a military presence. But how, what is a bug bat itself? Let's take a look. We're going to go view. A small bat-like creature with the head of an insect. It is found deep underground. Her left foreleg is dented, and her right upper leg is dented. Okay, so that thing, I don't know if that thing's dangerous or if it's a prey item for something else down here. But um, we have two major projects that we want to get done. Is that a layer of marble? Yeah, this is cool. Marble is a flux stone, which means if you can combine it with iron through a process that takes uh, quite a bit of um, time and energy, you can actually make uh, steel. But for now, we also need to build this downstairs because the other big project that we're going to do is making our wall go another level higher. 
which we want that to be two, two uh, layers tall. You can see that green there, that green is vomit. That is one of our dwarves has been cave adapted and has started to just, you know, blow chunks whenever they come to the surface. There we are, so how do we expand our wall? Well, first we need a place to stand. So we go build, big C, and we go floor. We're gonna extend a floor around basically the entire interior of the walls. And we're gonna make that out of blocks as well. In fact, no, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll save the blocks for something a little bit more important. But if we go build big C floor, there we are. We can, uh, we'll just use just slate. The wall itself, we are going to definitely want to build out of uh, blocks because like I said, it makes it much harder to climb that way. But for this floor section that's just behind the wall, just slate will do. Doesn't need to be anything fancy. Now then, this is one of the more tedious aspects here, is building out big, uh, big areas like this. But it is worth doing it for that extra layer of protection, especially now that we've found that um, underground passage, the nice big area. We can use our military to kind of explore that once we've gotten a little bit of a secure foothold down there. And now, something else cool that might happen is because we found a cave, there is a feature in Dwarf Fortress as it currently is, where monster hunters will arrive at our fortress and they will want to explore the caves in exchange for room and board. So just, just for feeding them, they will show up, uh, feeding them and giving them a, a room to sleep in, they'll show up and they will willingly explore those caves and probably die doing it. But we're okay with that. The thing I'm most excited about with the um, caves has to be the, the fact that we get all that wood because the underground fungi plants can be cut down and harvested the same as the trees on the surface which is just honky dory really Darn, I keep building walls but I'm hoping that this um, this project here is gonna keep people busy while the miners clear out the place at the bottom because once they're done that we're gonna uh, wall it all in and use it as our base of operations down there. So we'll probably end up, um, as I said, we'll wait until Dwarf Therapist has decided there's a bunch of people who aren't doing anything. We'll make a third squad, and they'll probably be uh, permanently underground as our cave dwelling squad. So those guys are gonna need uh, weapons, obviously. We will get them some. And we're gonna have to finish this off with something other than slate. Let's go with the uh, schist. Probably going to use about the last of it. We're going to have to wait for that to actually be done to build the last bit, but that's fine. So now all those idlers will be uh, grabbing stone to come up here. You basically then repeat this process, but with a wall, one tile forward when you're done. That's fine. These guys keep bestowing uh, names upon their shields. We're going to cut down some more trees because the elves told us not to. And that's just how we feel about the elves right now. Now, right now, these guys can walk across the uh, the wall, so they'll probably build this in a bit of a strange pattern. We've discovered a deep pit. Now, a deep pit means that your cave links to a much deeper cave system than the initial one. So this is what we can currently see of the cave system. I think that's on level 35. I'm not sure what level our cave system is on. Ours might be 35, actually. Ours is, ours is 36, so we've discovered pits. That's fine. You can see these plants that are growing down here. These are going to be super useful for us. I am real, real excited to show you guys what you can do with caves. Now, this cave water, how clean is this? Muddy floors, but the water seems okay. You can see quite a few plants down here. Little underground lakes. So if you were to spawn on 
a map that did not have water, caves are a good way to get that as well. And also, now that we've cracked open this cave, if we come all the way back up here to our farming area, you can see that there's already just a little bit here starting to form of the natural cave moss and life. The reason that's happening is the spores from the cave will affect any potential areas that can grow those kind of plants. So now that we've cracked it open, those spores have traveled all the way up to this subterranean cavern and they've thought, oh, this is pretty neat. We're gonna take root here. So what we can do is, well, what we are gonna do once our miners are free, because they're currently pretty busy, we're gonna hollow out this entire area on the inside of our moat and we can turn it into a tree farm, which will take a few years to be useful. But essentially, we now have another area to grow wildflowers and that kind of deal. So that's super, super cool. Obviously, we're going to have to go all the way back down again. The merchants are leaving. That is fine with us. Looks like we've basically dug out our kind of starting area. So we're going to go build big C walls. This is going to take a little bit of priority over our place on the surface. That's fine. We're still going to get around to... Um, to that. It's quite high on my priority list. But for now, we're just going to build a secure area that's probably going to end up being a barracks. We are going to put a bridge down here, not just um, a doorway. But it doesn't have to be a big one. I think in keeping, we are going to go with our uh, lead bar bridges again. They seem, they're a little bit of a trademark of the fort at this point, I think. Let's just once again, check our other list for our units. Uh, diplomats, elven merchants, and their stuff. So we don't see any monsters down here right now. You know, I think we're also going to order this stuff to be uh, smoothed. We'll probably engrave it at some point. I'm guessing most people... Ah, Human Axeman is visiting. So he'll want to come down into the caverns. Let's see what plants we have down here, shall we, folks? We have... Dead Young Tunnel Tube. We have Dimple Cups. So it looks like... Uh, ah, there's spores. Okay. So it looks like a lot... Oh, we got Plump Helmets. We have... Dead plump helmets, dead young goblin cups. So it looks like a lot of these plants are actually currently dead. That's actually fine. It's it's not a big problem. We have evidence of cave spiders down here. And what does it seem like they're eating? Cave spider silk. Cap hopper. I think that's an insect. So I don't think these are the giant spiders that will uh, eat our dwarves. I think those are just regular cave spiders. The giant ones are absolutely terrifying. Seeing plenty of people run around. Let's, uh, let's press F1, which will take us back to the surface. Go away, Avast. We don't need you right now. Someone's uh, been vomiting on the potatoes, so that should give the vodka a bit of extra flavor. Yeah, it looks like this is going to take a while. We did expect that. It does take a while to do pretty much anything when you're carrying giant boulders around, which is another advantage of blocks, by the way, is they, um, they're much easier to carry a couple of bricks than it is to carry a giant boulder. The elves are leaving. I'm half tempted to retract the bridge while they're on the way across it, but I'd probably get the timing wrong anyway. Human Spearman is visiting. Well, you're welcome to visit all you like, guys. So once we're done with these big projects, we'll probably try and recruit a, uh, a cave squad. But until then, these uh, randos who are visiting will take care of it for us. The outside wall, we're only going to bother going too high with it. Because if we go any higher, we're going to block our view from the fortifications. I wonder if anyone's actually started down here yet, or if they're gonna prioritize the uh, the walkway behind the wall. Probably gonna do the walkway first. But we have seen them coming down to collect the stone. And they are getting started, which is super good. Wonder how long it's gonna take someone to do that um, drawbridge. 
Which reminds me, we should probably build a floor down here. So if we are going to make this area into our kind of uh, barracks... Now, is that going to complain about the stairs? It's not. Cool. What do we have an absolute ton of? Slate blocks. Do we have a ton of any kind of material? Mostly just blocks. I mean, we could make the entire floor out of lead, but that seems a bit much. We're going to go with slate blocks. This is an absolute waste, but we have so many of them that we're allowed to be wasteful. It's going to make the room nice. There we are. So, that is going to be our um, fortified cave entrance. It's going to take an, a little while to get any of that done. But that means it's going to stop things like this just sprouting through the floor, which are sweet pods. It's, what, what is a sweet pod? Can we actually examine that? Nope. Fairly sure you can eat sweet pods. Ooh, petitions available if we press Shift P. So we have... For the purpose of eradicating monsters, Ormud Page Sizzled wishes to reside in Revered Ring. We can press A to approve, or we can press B to deny. We're obviously going to approve this man. They will now wander around the caves looking for monsters to kill. Some migrants has ar have arrived. Some trees have grown. Things are really looking up right now for us. They can help building all of these walls and floors. And of course, we're going to get our way down into the caves again. There is a way that you can uh, set more hotkeys. I will set this hotkey to be F2, but I have forgotten how to do that right now, so I'll look that up in between episodes because we're nearly at the end of this one. But we see some trees around down here and on the surface. I think what we're going to do is we'll clear the surface first to annoy the elves. And then uh, when we get chance, we'll build our tree farm in there. But for now, we're going to go right to the top corner. We're going to designate trees to be chopped. We're just going to make as big of a zone as we can. There we are. So any tree that's on the surface that's big enough right now is about to be uh, culled. Eleven idlers. They should uh, pick up stones any minute now. And uh, get on with this. Oh, that's right. We still have cabinets being made. We can probably uh, do some more of the bedrooms. I wonder if any of the bedrooms are unclaimed, it means we don't need to make any more, at least for now. Just a, a quick and easy way to check the number of residences you have. Looks like we actually have um, all of these bedrooms fit for habitation right now, which is super cool. We have our noble and administration level here. Luckily, we haven't needed the hospital at all yet. Let's check our nobles, see. Oh, we have a mandate here from Erosh. Make ballista arrows. Well, that's going to require... Something we don't have yet, which is a siege workshop. And I think we're just going to have to let that one pass for now. Someone's probably going to get beaten. Or maybe uh, thrown in jail. But we're going to see two siege weapons on another episode. I'm not going to start on those five minutes from the end. And it looks like we have slowly gotten started. Uh, let's go for... Uh, I think it's... It would be Q, wouldn't it? It would be Q. We're just going to Q and uh, remove that single thing there, because it's just going to try and build a floor over the staircase, which isn't going to happen. Oh, we have another petition. So we have uh, Lumat Quillwipe, who wants to reside here. We will accept them. I'm uh, quite enjoying seeing this progress being made. Although it is going to take them a while to do any of that. We see one of the people there, actually. There's an item blocking building site. That's fine. We'll have to... Um, go off suspended construction of the wall. I'm guessing that means something down here, then. Because we're not building any walls upstairs currently. Let's see which one was suspended. If you're hovering over them, you'll see one. How these say construction inactive just means someone's not doing it yet. There we are. Suspended. So there's probably just um, a person or a plant or something in the way. Shouldn't be a long-term issue. More petitions. 
we have Kakpoth Emerald Charm. Let's take a look, are any of these guys fighting yet? They're not yet. I don't think we actually have any monsters in these caves yet. Manara, what's a Manara? The hell are you? Oh, we're discovering caverns that actually go up. We're on level 35. Let's go back to this Manara, dude. He's on level 38. I want to see what this thing is. Let's press V for view. A creature that crawls along the cavern ceiling with four long arms. Its body is shaped as the head of a man with a mouth full of shark teeth. It waits for its prey to pass below. So that is exactly the kind of thing that our uh, brave and intrepid, intrepid uh, cave explorers are here to destroy. And it looks like it's actually getting pretty close to us. So what we're going to do, we're not going to tolerate that kind of shenanigans. We're going to get squad A, kill from list, kill that Manara. I don't like the idea of this thing uh, trying to drop down off of cave ceilings onto our derfs. Where's it gone? We're gonna follow it while we uh, wait for our dwarves to catch up. Oh, there we are. We're fighting already. Let's see. Oh yeah, this this does not look like it's gonna last long. It's dead. Let's see who finished that off, because Relic was fighting that there. Someone with a silver mace actually finished it off, which is not Relic. One of our mace dwarves got the kill. Now that we have caves, I would expect to see uh, quite a few more kills coming in. Of just, especially, um, while we're not down here yet, while we're building this building to uh, secure the place, we're definitely going to want to keep an eye out down here, and occasionally bring the military down. If we'd had, um, you can get, uh, this cavern looks like it's quite short, it's only one tile tall. If we'd gotten one of the multi-layer caverns, which is like, you know, five or six tiles high before you hit the roof, and we had those kind of menorahs in there, we'd have to bring the Marks Dwarfs down to shoot them off the ceiling. But because there was only one tile height anyway, that thing was never going to uh, get too tall. We keep suspending construction of these floor pieces. I'm guessing that's just because people are standing on them as someone else is trying to build them. So once we'll wait for this to be done, and then we'll uh, check it again. What we are going to do is just shoot all the way up to the top here. And um, yeah, it's probably these ones. We're going to have to uh, manually unsuspend, I'm guessing. No, no, they seem to be fine. You can see someone has vomited across the top of pretty much all of the wall because they're outside and they don't like that. Human Mace Man is visiting, that's cool. Now the, uh, the cave dwellers might actually make use of our medical facilities as they uh, explore the caverns, which would be A-OK -okay with me. I'm going to place down just another couple of uh, extra coffins, seeing as we actually didn't have as many uh, spaces as I thought we did for these. Interrupted by a Jabbera. What is a Jabbera? A huge monster that lurks in caverns. Oh. Squads, A and B, kill from list. Jabber it. Let's go. Oh, jeez. Is someone dead? The Jabber attached snatches at the pump operator on the right lower arm. Oh, took his arm and his leg. Yeah, someone's dead. Human Spearman did not do too much against the Jabber. Let's, um, hope our military get down here in time to mess that thing up. <coughs> the human Spearman's fighting it. And it looks like he's actually doing okay. This is exactly why you have those kind of uh, cave explorers in your fort. 
Did my military, did my human spearman survive? He did! But let's see, who got the, the finishing blow on the Jabbera? Military Dwarf punches the Jabbera in the neck with his left hand, bruising the muscle and fracturing the upper spine's bone. So it looks like one of the Military Dwarves punched it in the head so hard they broke its neck. Of course, there are now some uh, derfs to bury. Let's see if anyone makes it to the hospital, because it would be an interesting thing to uh, show you. Yes, we have someone in the hospital. So what we can do, because we have a chief medical dwarf, and this screen would not be available if we didn't, we can go over to the health screen. You can see that uh, H, what does that mean? It means he's hungry. But this guy is not in... Okay, let's try this again. Who are we looking at here? We're looking at Azos. Let's take a look at his wounds. Oh, he's lost his right lower arm. Yeah, his, his right arm is just gone. And he's unconscious and pale. What is my chief medical dwarf doing right now? Let's um, zoom to him. Nope, we can't. Can't from that menu. Okay, let's, uh, we'll just have to scroll down until we find the chief medical dwarf. He's currently constructing a building. Cool. Glad that we have our priority straight here. Interrupted by a, another Jabbera. Squads, A, B, kill from list. That Jabbera has a name, which means it's killed people. Oh, and it's right there too. It's fighting the human spearman again. This guy is really earning his keep. Yeah, he is actually, uh, he's kicking butt right now. I don't know if he picked up that silver spear from us or if he brought it himself. He is just jabbing that thing in the head over and over and over again. And then I think one of our military dwarves is going to come along and steal the kill. <laughs> yep, one of our uh, military dwarves with a silver mace finishes it off. You know what I think we're going to do? Now that we know how many of these things there are, we're going to station Squad A down here while we finish up construction of our secure area. We've lost a couple of dwarves to this now. And it's just worth keeping an eye out. Normally, if you don't see monsters pretty quickly, it's usually an indication that um, there's not many around and your monster patrol randor citizens who come from the world are enough to fend off whatever does arrive. But we have troglodytes and all kinds of stuff down here now. Now, troglodytes on their own aren't actually much of a threat. They're, they're pretty, pretty uh, poor at combat. But they're still better at combat than your average dwarf is. So it looks like we have a lot of suspended floor jobs. That were probably done because somebody was standing on this tile to do theirs. Okay, so let's head back up to a hospital now and see if any treatment is being done of people. Ah, there we are. I'm sure we just saw something happen. Well, let's uh, let's go to Z. Let's go to health, and we'll just keep going up till we see. So, is that who's that? That's the person who's drowsy, no evaluated wounds. Is that... That's Kibbuk. Are you Kibbuk? No, you're Avos. Can we search? Don't think we can. But you can see there is a little, um... Oh, that's the uh, the guy at the bottom of the thing. There is a little key just here that tells you what people need. 
we are gonna have to make some crutches and splints now that we have this. Looks like, um, oh, is this, what's this? Yeah, that's just somebody who's hungry. Aha. Moderate blood loss ability to grasp somewhat impaired. Right leg is cut open. No treatment scheduled. <laughs> Looks like the chief medical dwarf has come along and uh, put a dressing on the wound and has basically just, um, yeah, covered the wounds up and went, told him to man up. And it looks like he has. Either that guy died on the bed, or his wounds were covered in the dressing, and he went about his life. So let's go all the way back down to uh, 36, our floor of choice. Now it is... Okay, that just needs architecture. Someone will get around to that. Somebody is oblivious, which is not a not a great thing. But it looks like for the most part things are going okay. Petitions are available. Yep, so we have two more monster hunters. And uh, as we've said, their only purpose in the fort is to run around killing monsters. We are gonna over time slowly clear out this area of all of the other stone so that we can use it more thoroughly. But for now, I think we can uh, take Squad A off their station. We're just going to have to be super, super vigilant. Because there are things like uh, cave crocodiles and troglodytes down here who basically just want to eat us. That's, that's all they're really in for. And they're not too far away from our small... So we're going to press Squad A, we're going to press O to cancel their orders. And we're going to let them uh, head back upstairs. We don't have too much reason for people to be down here now that the uh, the thing is mostly constructed. We're going to unsuspend those two pieces of floor and let someone come down and finish those off. But I think we might end this episode here. We've lost a couple of dwarves. They should have been buried in the tomb. Which we are going to have to... Um, we are going to have to expand that now, because we have a pretty dangerous area beneath us, and I think we um, are considered responsible for burying the cave exploration dudes. Now what are you doing? Are you making the bridge? Let's, let's follow this guy and see what his plan is here. I think they're actually cleaning the caves of the bodies. <laughs> but we've got um, plenty of people visiting. We are going to uh, build Big T. We're going to build a lever down here for this bridge. So that we can seal this place off in uh, events that require it. Looks like we do need to uh, get some more mechanisms built as well. So before we finish off this episode, I'm going to order those. Just so that I will uh, know that they're ready for me when I come back. I do feel a little bad for that dwarf who lost his limb. He is uh, not going to be doing so well now. This place was claimed by a dude for a while, so it lost its orders. But for the most part, I think we've made some good progress here. Um, this is just going to take a long time. And it looks like uh, DF Hack has reassigned some of the people who were miners. But hopefully... It's going to uh, work as advertised and make people happier. Aside from that, I think um, we need to get this place secure. We need to get some traps down here, which I'll, we'll hopefully be able to show off those, because we haven't been able to show traps off yet. And then get to some cave exploring. See if we maybe got um, any metals down here. What walls, what are these walls made out of? Phylite. I don't think phylite is any kind of uh, metal. I think that's just a, a, your standard rock. But there is quite a bit of wood down here. And we're excited about that. Quite a bit of plant life. Equally excited about that. So, as usual, folks, thanks for joining me. And I'll see you in the next one.